everyone. Good to see your smiling faces. Some of you I've met before, so it's good to see you again. Welcome to online drama, something very different for everyone right now, but still fun and exciting. Um, just to kind of give you an overview, as Mrs. Ruiz said, I am the theater teacher at Salem. This is my first year, um, and obviously it's been a very interesting first year, but overall has been awesome. I love the Salem community, so it's been really fun to be part of it already. Um, our theater program specifically includes a lot of different facets. We have classes that anyone can take. They're open to all. Uh, you would start with Theater One. After doing Theater One for one year, you can take Advanced Theater. And so let's say you take Theater One as a freshman, then you would be in Advanced Theater technically the rest of your three years if you stuck with it for all four years total. And then each year of Advanced Theater, there are different focuses. So that way, if you are taking it all three years, you get a different experience each year. If you only take it one year, you still get a comprehensive experience with that class. Um, so you won't be left behind. Our focus today, and, and sometimes in general, tends to lean a little bit more towards the acting side of the theater world, but there are a lot of aspects that we do cover, because for those of you who aren't familiar, there are a lot of jobs and, and roles within theater, so not just actors. They're not the only ones involved. So directors, producers, choreographers, stage managers, designers, technicians, all of that is very important. And one of the great things about Salem is our students have a chance to be involved in any of those types of capacities. Um, so we have students who are completely running the booth. So if you have done shows, you know the booth is kind of where it's like the brain of the operation. So the person who is telling everyone when to open the curtains or close the curtains or when to turn on the lights and all of that. So our students do that, which is pretty awesome. Any student can audition for our shows, whether you take theater or not, that is open to all students. We do typically two main stage shows a year. So the fall is usually a straight play, um, so no singing or music, just typical play in the fall. And then in the spring, from now on, our goal is to do a musical specifically every year. There might be some years where we'll have a spring where we will do another straight play. Um, but my goal is to, to try to do a musical every spring. Gets other students involved since some people like just to come out for the singing and dancing aspect. Um, and then whether you have experience with singing or dancing, it's A-OK. -okay. Everyone has a place on our stage. So you'll, you'll learn along with everyone else how to, how to best show yourself off. So it's a lot of fun, hopefully, for everyone to be involved. Obviously great to also be in the audience. Uh, all of our students are required to go see the shows in the fall and the spring, so that way we have a really supportive student body and everyone looks forward to it. So a whole year of a lot of opportunities and some fun stuff. For today, I wanted to do some um, activities that we would do Normally also in a live environment, but also ones that I've been doing with our theater classes online. So you get a taste of, of both the normal class environment as well as the virtual experience that they've all been going through. Um, I would like it if you all could introduce yourselves. I'll give you a second to think about it first as I keep talking. Um, so if you feel comfortable, say you can just say your first name. That's fine. What grade you're currently in. And then maybe your favorite kind of outside of academic hobby or interest that you have, um, just so we can get to know each other. One of the things that I think is important and fun about theater are the connections that people make with each other um, for actors and for all the other positions. And in life, it's important to be grounded, to know yourself, to know the people that you're working with, and to be able to work well together. So a lot of what we do in theater in the classes and in the shows really helps strengthen those ideas and skills. So being able to publicly speak, being able to um, just have confidence in yourself, and again, to kind of know your strengths and your weaknesses. So finding out, you know, maybe you are a complete ham and you love to be center of attention and you're awesome on stage. Maybe you're really good at writing and you'd rather be behind the scenes, but you're like, you know what, I want to write shows and I want my voice to be out there. So with that, I will say, again, today's focus is definitely going to be a little bit more on kind of the acting side. The three main tools um, that I would say that most actors need or to use and to be aware of are their body, their mind, 
and the words. So we're going to do, after you introduce yourselves, we're going to do some physical type stretches, warm ups, even just from your chairs, it's completely fine. Um, your mind, obviously you need to be paying attention. You need to, again, know how to work with others. So everything that goes on in your brain and your personality, that is a, a skill set and a tool, not only for theater, but for life. And then your, the words. So generally speaking, the script, that is your tool. You are given something automatically by having a script and being able to use those words. Um, but today, for right now, to introduce yourselves, it is your words, the power of your words. So being able to confidently and happily introduce yourself. So again, name, current grade, and favorite non-academic hobby or interest. So whoever would like to go first can raise their hand and unmute. Great, and then go for it. I am going to go first. Um, I'm Lily. Um, I'm, just, I'm, in eighth, I'm in the eighth grade, sorry. And my favorite non-academic hobby is probably either skateboarding or playing video games with my friends, so yeah. Awesome, good choices. I have no skateboarding skills, but I do like video <laughs> games, <laughs> so thanks. All right, who would like to go next? <laughs> <laughs> I think Sophia wants to say something. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> Sophia called out. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm Sophia. I'm in eighth grade, and my non-academic hobby would be swimming. Nice. I like swimming for fun, but not for competition purposes. <laughs> but yes, that's fun. Next. I think Imani, yeah? Yeah, so my name is Imani. I'm in the eighth grade mm -hmm. and my, one of my favorite hobbies is drawing. Awesome. Very cool. It's a good hobby to have. <laughs> Next. Don't make me do any money mo on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's, I promise we won't buy it. Anne, I saw you move. <laughs> You've done this before. I know you can do it. <laughs> My name is Anne. I'm eighth grade. And hobby I like to do outside of academics is dancing. Mm -hmm. Nice. Definitely me too. It's a lot of fun. Next. I'm Rain and I'm in seventh grade so I'm the youngest <laughs> and um, my favorite non-academic hobby is technically academic because it's writing. Oh, that's I love writing. That totally counts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, and Peja, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, Emily. Oh, hi there. <laughs> this is Argentina. Oh, hi there. oh, no, no, you're fine. No worries. She is um, tr trying to actually having a few challenges right now getting her on so if you could skip her right now <laughs> oh yeah yeah of course i'm so sorry about that sorry. no worries just didn't want to miss anyone in the process <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> sure all right so thank you all for introducing yourselves so like i said to start we're gonna warm up our bodies a little bit which you probably need anyway if you are doing classes still online like everyone else and you sit way too much at your desk and stare at the screen too long so to start like i said it's important to be grounded, kind of know yourself. So wherever you are, sit up straight, be comfortable. So don't hold any tension in your spine or neck, but elongate from the head so that your everything is nicely stacked and so that you're leaving pressure, especially from your lower back in the process. All right, we're gonna do a couple of my favorite things that I do with the students. We'll start simple. So first we are gonna do some facial warm-ups. These are important in order to get your words out. So as an actor, enunciation is key. A lot of times actors will do um, 
tongue twisters in order to really get their mouths and lips functioning and tongues moving the way they're supposed to. So with that, it is your muscle, your face has muscles just like every other part. So to start, just kind of swing your jaw loosely back and forth. You can, if you feel like your hands are clean, you may touch your face and touch your jaw to kind of relax it, help it relax, help it move. Mine gets tight a lot, so this sometimes is just very helpful to make sure it doesn't get stuck. And then while you're doing that, you can keep doing that. Raise your eyebrows all the way as high as you can and let them drop on their own. So don't think about pushing them down. Just let them drop. Raise them again and let them drop. And then if you can, wiggle your nose. You can try to be like bewitched. Um, and it is okay if you cannot wiggle your nose. Most people can't. But the idea is you are sending energy to that part of your body by thinking about it and by trying to move it. So you're warming up the inner parts of your facial, facial muscles right there. All right. And then we're going to do what I call lion and lemon. So lion is when you make a really big face. So it's not just about the eyebrows going up. It's about everything being super big so not only are you trying to be as big as a lion but maybe it's what you would look like if you saw a lion right now come at you so <laughs> like that and then the opposite is lemon so you crunch up really tight so like try to make your face as small as you can scrunch everything together usually the face you might make if you eat a lemon i like lemon so it's not my face but we call it lion and lemon so when i say it you do it and then do it each time I say it. So you might already be doing lion, and I might say it again, which just means make it bigger. All right, so ready, set, lion! Lemon, lion! Lemon, lemon, lion! Lemon, lion! Lemon, lion! Lion! <laughs> All right, good job. And then shake your head back and forth. Because now that you've seen the lion and eaten the lemon, you probably need to get back into a comfortable space. So we're going to continue with some other physical warm-ups. Take your arms. Start with your left, if you would like, and join me. Put it across your chest. Hold it with your right wrist in front. And then wave at the person in the box next to you. You probably don't even know which person is next to you according to my screen, but just wave anyway. <laughs> All right. And then stretch by pulling your shoulder blades back together and switch. So the other way, right arm, and then wave at your other friend in their other box. <laughs> Great. And then stretch again through the center, pulling your shoulder blades back. All right, lift your shoulders to your ears and then let them drop. Lift your shoulders to your ears and then let them drop. And one last time, shoulders to the ears and drop. And now we're going to do little chicken wings. You can hold your shoulders with your hands and first circle backwards. Oh, and if the volume on your computer is good, you might even be hearing mine snap right now as I do that. So indicating I definitely need to warm them up. And then the other way, kind of roll them forward. So really working the shoulder muscles and engaging through your entire core to warm your bodies. Great. Now, you're going to take your arms up all the way to the, your ceiling, so you really should feel yourself stretching out, and if you can, also point your toes in the opposite direction, so you're really stretching, even though you're sitting, your whole body is still being stretched and warmed up, and then tickle your ceiling tiles, aka wiggle your fingers like this, as if you are trying to really tickle <laughs> the ceiling above you, and that helps send your energy through your entire body, and really, now we have warmed ourselves. The last thing they're going to do, you're going to let everything drop. One of my favorite um, mini exercises to do with people is called laughing yoga. Um, some of you may have done this when you came to, to campus to visit just because I do like it. Um, we don't do it every time. But it's basically after you've done all these different types of stretchings, if you are standing, you would be folded over so your hands are on the ground or as close to the ground as you can get them. And then when you raise up, on my count, you will laugh as loudly as you can. So for this purpose, obviously you don't have to touch the ground, but put your head down, really release your neck, make sure it's comfortable. And then as you are looking down, I'm gonna just instruct you in terms of breathing. So breathing exercises are also crucial for actors, 
definitely for singing, but also for life to keep you healthy and, and focused on what is important. So as your head is down, breathe in for a count of four, hold it for a count of four, and then exhale for a count of six. So breathe in four, three, two, one, hold it, four, three, two, one, release it, six, five, four, three, two, one. Again, breathe in, four, three, two, one, hold it, four, three, two, one, release it, six, five, four, three, two, one. Keep your head down and keep taking deep breaths that fill your entire lungs and let them out slowly. As you are in this position, let go of any other stress or tension that you might be holding anywhere in your body, including your mind. Push out other distractions, like what else you've got going on with school, at home, the world, let it all go. And then I'm going to count down from five. As I do, use that entire count to slowly roll back up to your seated position and at the end of it, raise your arms back to the ceiling and let out the biggest laugh you can when I get done with my count and I will do it as well. So, ready? Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> ah, good job. All right, and then shake it out because now you have warmed your body and everything should be very alive. So thank you for indulging me in the warm-ups, stretching and all of that. It's a lot of fun to do in class, and we usually start with some type of warm-up or exercise like that to get everyone Welcome to the class before we go on with other activities. So what I would like for us to do now is a game. Some of you may have played it before. Um, a lot of theater classes use it. A lot of team building groups use it, but it's called Giants, Wizards, and Elves. If you are playing in person, normally you create two teams, and it's kind of, sort of, like a big game of rock, paper, scissors. So typically you would have two different teams. Each team works as kind of one body and they would pick one of the things, giants, wizards, or elves, to compete against the other team. The way it works, when you are a giant, you have to make yourself big. So for the purpose of this screen, try to keep your hands in the camera line, but a giant is, ah! Giants then beat wizards. Wizards make little spell casting fingers to make it straight at the screen and go like you're casting a wizard spell. And then elves, normally when you play it, you would squat on the ground. So with this, we will try to get as low as we can and make little elf ears and go meep, meep, meep. So I look more like an alien, but it's okay. We're just going to call it elves. So like I said, giants beat wizards. Wizards be elves, but elves trip the giants. So, just like rock, paper, scissors, everyone has something that they beat or something that beats them. So in the, in the typical live in-person game, what you're trying to do is capture other team members after they have been beaten. For our purposes, we are gonna combine it with um, an improv activity called Mind Meld, where the goal is to try, so just like with the physical game, you're trying to get everyone on your team. So with this, we are going to try to use our wonderful connection over the virtual interwebs to get everyone to do the same thing. So you personally are going to choose which of those three things you want, but we will see if, if in a few rounds of doing it, we can all get to doing the same gesture. I will say that both my theater one class and my advanced class, I don't think have yet to all do the exact same thing. So don't worry if we don't. But the idea is I will count to three, you will pick your thing, we will all do it at the same time at the screen, and then we'll just see if we're able to ever get to all of us being one mind. All right, so again, if you are a giant, 
Make yourself as big as you can in the screen. If you're gonna be a wizard, do your wizardy hands towards it. And if you're an elf, squat, you go, meep, meep, meep. All right, ready? So I will count down from three and we will all reveal what we are. Three, two, one. <laughs> all right, so I see a couple, I see everything. So we've got elves, wizards, and giants going on. All right, shake it off, shake it off. Now let's see if we can do it this time where we're all just magically going to pick the same thing. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> so technically speaking, I think we almost all did the same one, partly because some people there was a delay. So let's do it again to see if it was really magical or if it was a fluke. All right, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> we got everything again, which seems more accurate. So good job with that. Um, now I would like us to do another quick game before we move into kind of a, a, a group activity. Um, so this next game is called Big Fish, Little Fish. The idea is it's, it's about size and reactions. So a lot of times in theater, you obviously have physical props and or other people that you're working with. But sometimes, like in pantomime or just depending on the show, you have to mine things. Um, and regardless of if you have a real prop or not, it's important to be aware of size and spatial configurations. So Big Fish, Little Fish is where someone starts and they get to choose the size of their fish then they will hand it off to someone else, and that person has to receive the exact same size fish before they pass it on to someone else, and they can change the size. So now, just to remind everyone of the names that we have in the group, we have Lily, Amani, Sophia, Anne, and Rain, who are playing. So what I would like us to do, and this will involve you needing to uh, turn off your mics again, or turn them, on, unmute yourselves. Um, and so let's say I start, I would choose my size fish and then I would send it to one of you and I will say your name. So I might say, you know, little fish, Amani. And then I send it and then Amani, you need to receive it and it needs to look roughly like the same size as best you can with the camera. And then Amani, you would take it and then you would choose someone else and you can make it whatever size you want after that. So does that make sense? Everyone understands? Great. All right, so I will start. All right, I'm gonna start. Oh, and again, when you receive it, react to how you might react if someone is giving you a little fish. Or for example, the bigger it gets, the more you might be like, whoa, because it's a really big fish. So, I'm gonna start little fish and I'm gonna go little fish Lily <laughs> okay. oh gosh okay big fish to Anne that big so Anne receive the big fish <laughs> Yep, and then pass it to whoever you make it a new size or keep it the same and pass to someone else. Can you say that again? The audio cut out. So if you you can choose whatever size you would like to make the fish, show us and tell us either big fish or little fish, and then send it to someone and just say their name. Little fish Amani. <laughs> um, okay, Big Fish Sophia. <laughs> okay, there. Um, Big Fish Emily. Oh my gosh, this is the biggest fish I've ever seen in my life. Oh man, I'm just gonna have so much sushi. So I'm going to chop, 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 chop. I'm gonna cut it up and to make it a little fish. Rain, this little fish is all you. Little fish, rain, this little fish is all you. Um, little fish, Anne. 
Big Fish Jessica. This is a huge <laughs> fish. I want to share it with my friend, Miss Pearson. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for throwing a fish at my face. All right, I'm squishing it and I'm putting it back in the fish tank. But now you can eat yourselves again. Round of applause for a very good job receiving and throwing different sized fish. So probably not what you expected to do with your day when you woke up this morning. All right, so for our last kind of activity that I would like to do, one thing I wanted to share with you all is the concept of tactics. So tactics are a word you hopefully are already familiar with in life. Um, you might not really even think about them, but tactics are technically how you do something or what, why you're doing what you're doing and how you are implementing it. And so in theater, tactics are used to get what the character wants. It might not be something physical, so it's not necessarily walk on stage and go grab the prop from someone else and you don't necessarily use a tactic just for that. It might also be maybe the character wants satisfaction and they're just not, everything in their life is, is letting them down. So they're seeking satisfaction. So how might they go about getting that? One of their tactics might be um, to run away because maybe they're just so upset by everything that is disappointing them right now in their lives. So they think, all right, you know what? Peace out, I'm gonna run away. And so their tactic is really you know, avoiding or to, to escape. So tactics can come in many different ways. Sometimes they might be positive tactics. So for example, you might in your life, in real life, want your mom to make you a really delicious dinner because you're hungry, because you're bored of what you've been eating, because whatever the reason might be. The way you do that might be something like flattery. So you might decide, you know what? I don't think my mom's gonna make me this really nice meal unless I'm like, hey, you look so nice today. You know, wow, like your mom, you are doing a great job. And then you might say, man, like I just love your home cooked lasagna that's my favorite meal and then your mom may or may not be like you know what yeah that's i'm gonna make that for you tactics can also be negative so it could be something where you want your friend at school to uh, give you their bracelet that maybe doesn't really mean a lot to them and, be, and so because of that you really want it so you might use a tactic like peer pressure where you say things like, that bracelet doesn't even look good on you, or you never wear it, or, you know, so that would be a negative tactic. However, you might still achieve your goal because your friend might be like, oh my gosh, you're right, here it is, I don't want it, I don't want to look silly with it anymore. So tactics can be used in a lot of different ways. And I'm afraid my internet might have frozen because all of you, can you all hear me? Okay, good. <laughs> All of a sudden you were all frozen and I thought, oh dear, <laughs> I may be talking to myself. Um, so <laughs> anyway, like I was saying, tactics can be positive or negative. Either way, you might get what you want. So there's technically nothing wrong with positive or negative. So what we are going to do as a group um, is we are going to come up with a commercial for this water bottle. And first, I would like you all to come up with ideas of what else this water bottle could be specifically in reference to what is going on right now. So maybe something that helps treat the coronavirus, maybe something that helps keep you company while you're home, stuck inside, or maybe something that um, the entire world can use. So this is not a water bottle anymore. This is whatever you decide. So does anyone have a suggestion for something that this could be. Yes, Miss Watts. Be a rolling pin to make homemade cookies. <gasps> Ooh, yes. Cookies are great during this time. So yes, it could be a rolling pin to make cookies. Other suggestions? Yes, Anne. A robot dog to keep you company. Yes, for sure. It could be a robot dog that keeps you company. So man's best friend in a very easy way to have with no cleanup required. 
What else could this be? Yes, Miss Rogers. I think it could be a bottle to send a message to your friends in. Yes. So especially right now where you might not be seeing as many people every day as you're used to, you can send a little message in a bottle and be like, here, friend, don't forget me. Remember that I love you. <laughs> what else? It could be water that refills again and again, like unlimited that you can give to like homeless people. Ah, oh, that is my dream just for myself because I love water so much. I, if this could refill itself, I would be so happy all the time. Mm -hmm. Just yes, constant water. And then, yeah, maybe that would help cut down right now in the world with everyone having complete access to free water. So that is a great idea. So let's take that idea. And now what I would like you to do is I'm going to give a few suggestions of tactics but you get to choose your own and whoever would like to go first can go first what i would like you to do is to sort of make a, a mini commercial for our lovely self-replenishing water source so think about what you would need to what tactic you would need to use to get someone to buy it for example so this is a commercial so certain tactics can be um, like we said, peer pressure, flattery, um, coercion could be, um, I'm trying to think of some very different ones. It could be, um, being obnoxious, like that could be a tactic. So maybe it's just constant in your face. This is, I'm going to get you to do what I say because that's what I'm going to do. It could be, and you can feel free to come up with a tactic on your own. And then when we have a volunteer, give us your little mini commercial, and then the rest of us will try to guess what your tactic is. So who would like to go first with a mini commercial and show us your tactic? I see the brains turning in your heads as you <laughs> think of how to advertise our lovely replenishing water source. You could, um, wait, can we, can we share? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could have the cameras for the commercial follow you around as you went and gave that to people in need or homeless people. And then that could ensue a sense, a sense of empathy with the viewer. Ooh, nice. Yes. Yeah. So empathy, empathy is always important in the theater world and in real life. So that would be a great tactic is yes. If you were to show yourself providing this and showing how many lives it's touching and all the people that are receiving it, then other people would be like, wow, yes, I want to also feel that good and, and spread that, that love. All right. Who else has a little commercial for this resource? Ooh, I saw Mrs. Ruiz's hand. All right. Hold on one second. I have to like prepare. So let me get into the scene. Okay. Hold on. Oh, hello there. Oh, I don't think you've heard of this fantastic new water bottle. Oh, this old thing? Oh, let me just tell you, only the finest elite will ever use this water bottle, I promise. You think Hydro Flask is something? Not at all. See, this water bottle is only for the best because you know why? You know why? It has the elixir of youth and popularity. So what else do you need? So buy today for four payments of $19.99. All right, goodbye. <laughs> Everyone give Mrs. Ruiz a round of applause. Woohoo! So guesses, what tactic do you think she was using? Anyone can shout it out if you think you have an idea. I think she was using exclusivity, making it sound like this was like the thing That's to awesome. have and not everyone's going to have it, but you should have it. Nice. Lily, was that the exact same word you were going to use? I was going to use like, I didn't know what word I was going to use. I was trying to think of a word that fit what I was yeah. thinking of. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, but like she pretty much described exactly <laughs> what yeah, yeah. Yes. So Mrs. Ruiz, was that, what was your tactic? <laughs> Um, Mrs. Rogers and Lily are both correct. Nice. Well done, everyone. All right. We probably have time for one more or so. 
So does anyone else want to give a mini commercial for our water source? <laughs> Lily, I can tell you're really thinking over there. I think you've got <laughs> I am thinking. I'm like talking it out with my mom. Like, <laughs> I, I don't have an idea. <laughs> I would just use peer pressure, probably. So, so even though we won't be able to guess that, show us what you think that might look like. Okay, I feel like it would. Okay, let I me mean, just. Okay. All of your friends are buying the new water bottle from Sparks Enterprises. So why wouldn't you? And it's cheaper than the leading water bottle brands. Usually they're twenty ninety nine, but here. They're for the cheap price of five dollars. No, like just five dollars and no tax. And un unlimited water. And unlimited water. <laughs> so why wouldn't you do that? I don't know. Woohoo! Everyone give Lily a round of applause. Awesome job. Yikes, I feel I feel pressured into having to buy it, but I will because it's a good thing. All right, so thank you all for, for playing and for doing that. I, I'm not sure how much time we do have left, but I wanted to let people um, ask questions or turn it over to the admissions team to see what else they would like to cover. So, um, do y'all have any questions about Salem uh, Fine Arts Program that we can help answer for you? I have a question for Ms. Pearson. Sure. Ms. Pearson, if I am an incoming freshman at Salem Academy and I am incredibly shy, but theater seems kind of cool, do you think that I could still participate or is it really only for people who feel super comfortable being on stage? That is a great question. I would say that it is literally for all people. Um, so again, the theater one class itself is kind of a jumping off point. A lot of what we do does focus on, again, kind of the, the acting side, but like you all just did today and you were excellent at it, it's a lot of physical activities, stretches, group games, activities to really think about working with others, to build your own self-confidence. So whether you ever get on stage or not, it's something that hopefully you will have fun with and be able to translate into other areas of your life. So again, when you're maybe giving a presentation in English, you will have a little bit more of a leg to stand on because you'll remember kind of what we go over in class, the training and the prep, and it's all very seamless and natural. So you probably won't even think about it because it's just going to be part of what you do. Because it's open to everyone, you could maybe find yourself trying something that you never thought you would. So right now you might be like, heck no, I don't wanna be on stage. But maybe you decide, all right, you know what? My friends are doing it. So maybe you're, you're peer pressured into it. Um, and then you might realize, wow, this is a lot more fun than I thought. Or, you know, I'm going to do the spring musical because I can be in the ensemble. So I'm on stage, but I don't have to do anything by myself. And then you realize how much fun it is or how comfortable you might feel doing it. So you might do even more than that. Um, and then, like I said, there are so many opportunities backstage so everyone can be involved in that sense where you might just want to help paint the set or you might want to help move things often on the stage during the shows, which is a very minimal time commitment. You just have to be there for the shows themselves, but they're all extremely important roles. So everyone has a chance to shine. So no matter what your personality style is, there's something for you. Next question, anyone? I'm going to ask one more question and sure. see if maybe that helps everybody get a little more comfortable. And Ms. Pearson, this one's going to be hard and I know that going into it. So it might take you a minute. Um, I'll let you guys know Ms. Pearson is an actress herself um, and does lots of um, stage shows and things like that. So I want to know what has been your favorite role that you've performed um, maybe ever or you could tell us just in the last two or three years. Awesome. Yes, that is a very tough question. Um, thankfully, one I've been asked a lot, so I kind of have my, my, my party trick ready. Um, I, I'm going to cheat if that's okay. I might say more than one and explain. So 
uh, thankfully, like Mrs. Rogers said, I have done a lot of shows in my lifetime. I've been in, in what we consider straight plays, so ones without music, and musicals, which tend to be my favorite. One of my all-time favorite roles that I did was The Witch in Into the Woods. If you are familiar with that show, you may have seen the movie with Meryl Streep several years back. And that was one of my favorites, partly because I had loved that show for a very long time before I got to do it. And then when I did it, everything about the process was amazing. My director was fantastic. The music director was beyond a genius. Um, and so we all really respected him and learned a lot. And we had such a great cast that worked really well together. Everyone was super talented, super nice, which was really good. And we all worked well together. So for me, it was that overall experience that made it so worth it. And the role itself was a lot of fun uh, because if you're not familiar, the witch, she's not the bad guy. There is technically not really a bad guy in that show. However, she's a very fun character because Oftentimes, she seems like she might be the bad guy. She places curses on people. She's not necessarily nice. Um, she, you know, sends people out in kind of dangerous quests. So it was fun to be able to do something like that that's maybe not, you know, how I consider myself. But then also to show the, the humor. She's very funny, has some really funny one-liners. Um, so that's one that kind of sticks with me. Um, and then in terms of the past few years, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the show Cabaret, but that is the last show that I did. So now it kind of sticks in my brain because it's most recent. Um, I played Sally Bowles, who is a British entertainer living in Germany, and she's just fun. She's very stuck in her own world, um, kind of self-centered, but in a lovable way, and just gets to dance and has a lot of depth and emotion. So it's nice to be able to play something with range where even though she seems all fun and, and flippant, she also gets to have these moments of true introspection and really just letting it, like, bearing her soul on the stage. So that's always fun to do. So hopefully that answers that question and <laughs> gives an idea of what might be enjoyable about any different role out there. Thank you. Yes, of course. What other questions do any of you all have? Anything at all? Does anybody think they want to do theater when they're at Salem Academy? Awesome. Great. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Well, um, since nobody has any questions, um, I think I'm going to um, end the meeting, but I just want to thank you all so much for joining us today. Y'all have just been spectacular from your lions and lemons and giants, elves and wizards. I almost forgot the last one. And also a huge thank you uh, to Ms. Pearson for just being phenomenal and helping us out with this virtual learning experience. So round of applause to everyone. And, and I, please don't, don't forget to advertise our next class this week. Oh, of course. I'm so sorry about that. So um, this Friday at 11 a.m., uh, Ms. Shell Hammer is going to be teaching a abstract analysis course. So we are going to be learning how to, uh, learning about haikus as, as well as uh, graphic novels. Um, so it's going to be really super exciting and we would love to see you all there. Um, it is going to be fabulous. So awesome. Well, again, hope y'all have a fantastic day and hope you have a good one. Bye. Thank you all. <laughs> I have a question real quick. Oh yeah, of course. In theater class, would we do big plays like Hamilton? <laughs> so good question um, the class itself will do smaller type things so the class is mostly you know day-to-day -day in the classroom experiences and activities um, typically the class theater one or advanced theater would put on maybe one kind of mini show per semester that's during the school day for the whole school and then separately from class, we do the two big shows that I was talking about. So one in the fall, one in the spring. Those are open auditions to anyone. So someone does not have to be in the class in order to be part of the show. Um, but those are the ones that are bigger. So, you know, several years ago, they did Mary Poppins, um, which is a very big show, well-known musical. Um, 
and it's based on you know what the students might be interested in doing as well as what we can get the rights for um, but yes so it's typically two what the fall show might be a little smaller um, by scale than the spring show so does that answer your question Anne? great <laughs> any other questions Awesome. Well, remember, um, on Friday at 11, um, our English course with haikus and graphic novels, and we hope to see you there. So be safe and hope you all have a great day. Bye, y'all.